All right, so now let's go on to some examples. Example one is just the example we've been using uh, to talk about how to find, uh, how to set up your data and how to find um, expected values. Um, so I've set this up in an Excel file. Um, this is just exactly the same way we set it up previously. Um, I've just found the row totals as well as the column totals. And now I could start on my hypothesis testing. So first things first, uh, step one, our null hypothesis should say something like this, that um, the proportions of uh, satisfied and unsatisfied uh, people, I guess, adults, uh, for Democrats should be the same as for Republicans. So the proportions of category one and two of satisfied and unsatisfied, I'll say voters, should be similar for Democrats and Republicans. So the alternative hypothesis is that at least one of those proportions will be different between Democrats and Republicans. All right, step two. Step two, we'll uh, just set our alpha to be 0.05. And we know that because we're doing chi-square uh, hypothesis testing, it's one-tailed. Step three. You might want to draw a chi-squared uh, chi distribution for yourself or just in your head and sort of color in that alpha part and try to think, okay, I want to find my critical, critical chi-square. In order to find the critical chi-square, I need to find my degrees of freedom. And my degrees of freedom is going to be made up of the degrees of freedom for, for category as well as the degree of freedom for population, right? There's two, popu uh, there's two populations, so it's two minus one. And you could also see that as the co columns, two columns minus one. You don't count these total columns. Those aren't, those aren't real columns. Um, nor do you count this total row. And the degrees of freedom for number of categories is we have two categories, satisfied and unsatisfied, minus one, right? And, um, there, that corresponds perfectly to number of rows minus one. And so the degrees of freedom here is going to be the this times this, right? So degrees of freedom for category times degrees of freedom for population. And that's just one. So what's our critical chi-square? Well, that's going to be found by chi-inv. We put in our probability as well as our degrees of freedom and we find uh, 3.84 is our chi-square, critical chi-square. So we're looking for uh, sample, uh, mm, samples that represent populations, uh, sample chi-squares that are larger than, uh, than 3.84. So step four looks something like this. So in order to find our sample chi-square, what we need to do first is find our expected values. So here we have observed frequency, right? What we need to do is find expected frequency. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this down here so we don't have to keep scrolling. I'll also bring this up. And so I'm going to uh, I'm going to draw a uh, I'm going to write the table here for observed frequency, but I'm going to create the same table for expected frequency. Although now I have to delete all these guys. Okay, so when I look at my uh, expected frequency, um, I need to find out what's the general rate and then multiply it by however many, uh, however many, in this case, people I have in that sample. So the general rate of being satisfied is 1,316 divided by 
1886. So that's the general rate, and that's uh, about 70 percent, right? I'm going to take that and multiply that by the total number of Democrats. Now, this uh, this part I want to keep that the same, and I want to keep that in the same uh, column. So I'm going to put a, a, a dollar sign in front of the D to lock down that column. And here I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of both the D and the 21 in order to lock down this actual cell. Because here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually copy and paste that over here. And if I look at this, then what I'm doing is I have this uh, same rate, again, the rate of being satisfied, but now it's multiplied by the number of total Republicans. And then I'm going to take that cell, copy and paste it down here, and here I see that now I have the rate of being uh, unsatisfied, and I need to change this to that. And here I have the rate of being unsatisfied, and I'm going to multiply it by total number of Republicans. So these are my expected frequencies. Notice that the totals still add up to be the same, right? And um, usually it should. There might be some slight discrepancies, but that will just be because of rounding error. So they should still be pretty close. So now we have observed frequencies as well as expected frequencies. And now I need to figure out um, my chi-square. My chi-square is going to be made up of observed frequency minus expected frequency squared divided by expected frequency. And I'm going to need to find that for Democrats and Republicans, as well as satisfied and unsatisfied. and then add up all of these cells, right? So I'll say grand total, and I'll put that over here. Okay, so let's find the observed frequency minus the expected frequency squared divided by expected frequency. And I could just copy and paste that here because Excel will just move everything down. Then I can take this, move it over here, because Excel will move everything over to the right. Ta-da! All right, and the grand total for all four of these is going to be 547.18, right? And so, my sample chi-square is quite large, quite large, right? And so, do I reject my null hypothesis? Indeed I do. Um, and we can find uh, the p-value. So here, I'll put Chi dist in order to find my probability. Here it is. Degrees of freedom is going to be one. And that is a very, very, very small p value. So this is a pretty radically different, uh, different uh, population that we stuck in there. All right, and if you want to put in step five, you could say reject null. Great.